This episode of Because Science is brought to you by Novartis. Can Deadpool regenerate memories? A superhuman healing factor might very well be the most common superpower. It's almost necessary in super stories because it allows super people to shrug off damage that would otherwise end them. But what if what had to be healed wasn't a cut or a lost limb? What if you had to regenerate your brain? Could you regenerate memory? Cha-cha. Sword sound like. When you think of superhero regeneration, characters like Lobo, Wolverine, and Deadpool immediately come to mind, though Deadpool is probably most associated in pop culture with recovering after extreme damage. Deadpool creator Rob Liefeld even says that Wade Wilson could regrow his entire head if necessary. The human brain is possibly the most complicated thing in the universe, so if someone like Deadpool really could regrow their head and brain, how would that process proceed and what would happen to the memories that make the Merc with the mouth who he is? You know, annoying. First of all, what is regeneration? Well, healing a wound is literally one of the most complicated things that your body does. If you were to get a cut, for example, multiple biological pathways in your body would be immediately activated and synchronized in a process that can take years to complete. Before we go any further though, we should point out that your tissues do not have to be damaged in order to fully replace themselves. You are doing this right now. Every two weeks, you lose enough skin cells that your whole epidermis is replaced. Every 10 years, you get new bones, and every two days, you get new stomach lining. However, biologically speaking, if your tissues were damaged, you will not recover like Deadpool does. In response to damage, almost every kind of tissue in your body will attempt to repair itself. But this repair is not regeneration. In human adults, your tissues undergo a different process called wound repair. For example, take this chunk of skin here. If I were to cut it, your body would immediately begin to repair it, but in a relatively haphazard way. After undergoing a period of inflammation and tissue formation to replace lost cells and blood vessels, collagen fibers are messily laid down inside of the wound and they form a lump of non-functioning flesh that we call scar tissue. On the other hand, cool. On the other hand, true tissue regeneration is the complete replacement of lost material with a fully functioning biological copy. Who keeps giving away the katana? Regeneration follows similar pathways as wound repair, but the process is very different. The creatures that fully regenerate lost limbs, for example, don't lay down scar tissue. Instead, at the site of an injury, a mound of cells form. This mound of cells, comprised of stem cells and some other nearby cells that have lost their cellular identity, move to the site of the injury and then differentiate and multiply into whatever the body needs. It's like fixing a lost limb by regrowing it from the beginning like an embryo would. Axolotl salamanders and planarian worms are famous examples of true regenerators that can do this. They can regrow lost limbs, eyes, spines, even parts of their brain without any scar tissue. The worms in particular can regrow their entire heads. And we study these creatures extensively because for whatever reason, though our bodies have similar genetic pathways for this kind of regeneration, our evolution did not favor giving us these amazing abilities. You hear that? We're jealous of a worm. Some organisms can and do regrow their entire head and brain. So if Deadpool had the same ability, <laughs> how would it happen? Huh. Ah. Uh. I wanted to work with Novartis specifically on this episode because thanks to some cutting edge research, we now have an idea of how this process might actually proceed. If Deadpool lost his head at his neck, he'd probably have to go from a mound of stem cells all the way back to brain, like a human embryo might. And that early brain and how it develops might look something like this. 
Novartis scientists and their partners have made an amazing scientific breakthrough. They've been able to take skin and blood cells from human patients and force those cells into becoming the kinds of cells that can differentiate into any kind of tissue. They call them pluripotent stem cells. It's a process that you'd imagine Deadpool's body enacting. They then coax these pluripotent stem cells with chemicals into becoming brain cells or neurons. These neurons in a dish then start connecting and self-organizing, becoming brain organoids. These brain organoids mimic the early human brain at the very beginning stages of development. It is an incredibly sophisticated eight-week process that directs and tends to the development of neurons using growth factors, proteins, and other chemicals. Just look at those. Of course, though, these brains in dishes are not full brains. They're just a few millimeters across, and they aren't thinking or feeling or taking in information from the outside world. They are, though, forming connections and structures inside of themselves that we recognize. In studying and developing these brain organoids, scientists can study the neurons that are most susceptible to disease. They can study the neurons from a patient with Parkinson's or schizophrenia without needing the actual neurons from that patient. Organoids like these might help us understand how brains form, and that fundamental knowledge might in turn help us understand diseases of the brain and how to treat them. Researchers like those at Novartis are studying this every single day, which I think is pretty incredible. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> Now that we know that wound healing isn't the same as regeneration, that some creatures can regrow their entire brains, and that young brains form in very specific ways, what would really happen if Wade Wilson lost his head? After Deadpool was decapitated, Wade's powers would probably tell his body to slow down or eliminate the normal mammalian fibrotic response or response to lay down scar tissue. So instead of his neck immediately scarring over, or let's be honest, Wade immediately dying, but we don't have to break that fourth wall. Or should we break that fourth wall? Nah, so instead of starting to scar over, cells in Wade's body would start making their way to the site of the injury. Stem cells would begin to differentiate and cells in the surrounding tissues would remodel themselves into the beginnings of skin, skull, and brain. The early brain would most likely start out looking like the organoids that Novartis works with and then eventually, superhumanly, Deadpool's head would return. But would everything inside his head return? Like regeneration, memory is not fully understood, but the common thinking is that memory is stored in the connections between your neurons. You have billions of brain cells in your head, and each one of those brain cells can make thousands of connections. Memory, and everything that makes you, you, is dependent on these connections. Who you are as a person, your personality, is tangled up in an ever-changing, hundred trillion branched forest of dendrites, axons, and glial cells. There are so many connections, many of them firing right now inside of your brain, that even if I could draw for you 10 of them every second, it would take me over 300,000 years to populate this forest with the leaves of experience and memory. One of the amazing things about our brains is that memory can morph and change and strengthen and weaken depending on time and experience. And that also means that if Deadpool was able to regenerate an exact copy of his brain, he would not come back an exact copy of himself. We know from the brain organoids and from human development that brains need experience and stimuli in order to form memories and lasting connections between those neurons to make someone who they are. So, if you really decapitated Deadpool when his head regenerated, at best, he would be a completely different person with no experience as the brain regenerated, or at worst, he'd be a blank slate with the mind of a newborn. Sure, both of these situations is better than dying, but think about it, it's a terrifying trade-off, isn't it? To come back as the merc with the mouth, except you've forgotten how to speak. And finally, that's why I'd like <laughs> And finally, that's why today I'd like to talk to you about the merits of astrology. What? 
Ah, uh, what? My ah. Uh. <laughs> so, so, could a master of regeneration like Deadpool regrow memories? I don't think so. Given how regeneration works in amazing animals and given how brains form themselves and memories, if Wade Wilson could regrow his head, I don't think he would return with any of the memories that made him who he was. His body may be able to make tiny hands and tiny legs, but memories, he'd have to make those himself. Because science. I, I forgot how to leave. I know that this analysis kind of says that one version of this comic book mutant superpower thing can't happen, but it also means that when Wolverine is shot in the head with the adamantium bullet that goes into his brain but not out of his skull and it scrambles his brain which then regenerates and then he loses all of his memories, that makes perfect sense, which makes it, of course, the perfect film. Thanks again to Novartis for collaborating with me on this video. Novartis uses science-based innovation to address some of society's most challenging healthcare issues. They discover and develop breakthrough treatments and find new ways to deliver them to as many people as possible. Thank you so much for watching, Morgan. If you want more of me, you can go back to Alpha at projectalpha.com. Do that, sign up and subscribe. You can get this show two days earlier than anyone else, and you can get other premium content from myself, Nerdist, and Geek and Sundry. Also follow myself and Because Science on those social media handles there, and you can suggest ideas for future episodes. Hey, sometimes I take them, and don't forget, bye.